Good morning and praise the Lord our God. Welcome to Mishkan. My name is Victor. I'm the lead pastor. And I'm going to take you today, even as we close or conclude our week, lead prayer and teaching in this season. Father, we exalt you. Be glorified this morning as we share your word and as we pray. We ask that let your kingdom come and let your will be done. In the name of Jesus. And we want to thank you for this season of consecration. As you call us to be a holy nation. Your own special people. Who have been called out of darkness. Into your marvelous light. We give you thanks. For there is none like you. Receive the glory. Receive the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. How are you? And how are you doing? I believe that this month of January is getting better and better every day. We are being chiseled. We are being pruned. We are being brought back to authentic Christianity. We are being called back to authentic kingdom community. We are being called back to be a witness of who God is on earth. That is our calling. and That is what Mishkan stands for. In the name of Jesus. Nothing else. We are not here for ourselves. We already have a name. The name that is above every name. That is the name we exalt. We already have a mission and a vision. That is his vision. And so we are cooperating with him. In the name of Jesus Christ. The son of the living God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. And amen. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. And we give him praise. And we give him glory. We are serving his purposes. We don't have any other purpose. In Mishkan, it is as it is in heaven. So should it be on earth. Our reference point, where are we focus is God. Not a man of God. We can't deviate for that. Because we really have a mission that Christ has given us. We're just building upon it. So that we complete our race. We are not competing with anybody. We don't have time for that. We are moving according to the purposes of God. We are not pursuing success according to the how the world defines it. Based on numbers, based on these other things. Yes, they could be indicators to some extent. But we are pursuing the purposes of God based on his program, according to his spirit, according to his plan. Yes, in the word of God, in the name of Jesus. That is who we are. To the glory of God. Amen. And so today, being a Friday, we'd like to would like to conclude this aspect of community. But we are going to build much more next week. We're just giving you, we're just laying a foundation <laughs> of consecration and community. But we are going to take it deeper next week. Amen. We are just still scratching the surface. But God will help us to take it deeper. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, as we move into consecration. We've been looking at consecration in the garden. We looked at how Abraham was consecrated. Noah. The children of Israel, how they left Egypt, how they were consecrated to the Lord. We looked at their lives of consecration in the wilderness. Amen. And we have also seen how Israel was to be a holy nation. 
his own special people. Amen. And today we want to pick it up, and I touched on a little bit of that yesterday as we were praying. We just want to ensure that we get it right. And so we want to see, look at the life of believers, our consecration as believers. Amen. We've already looked at First uh, Peter 2.9. 1 Peter 2.9, which is one of our dim scriptures for discipleship. It encompasses a number of things. And please don't miss that class. Don't miss that class. There is something God is doing. Amen. You know, we need to understand that true Christians are spiritual Israel. We have got the physical Israel and the spiritual Israel. The church has not replaced Israel. Amen. There is the physical Israel and there is the spiritual Israel. And God still has a plan for the physical Israel. He will save them. Amen. And the church of the Lord consists of holy people. God the Father has personally called out of this world. They include both Gentiles and Jews. Forming spiritual Israel. And they have one calling. To be holy. To be separate. To be different from everyone else. It is not a suggestion. It is our requirement. And therefore we need to work toward that. Amen. So number one. Begin by thanking God. That you've been called out of darkness. You've been separated from the world. You've been called out of the world. Into God's kingdom. Into God's kingdom of the kingdom of this dear son into his marvelous light oh lord our god what an honor this morning that we are called the children of god the children of light and not darkness we want to bless your name for the grace that you've called us out you've shown us love you've washed us from our filth that we gathered in the world you've delivered us from the God of this world you've delivered us from the destructions of this world you've delivered us from the sins and the wickedness of this world and therefore you've separated us and there must be a distinction and difference between us and everyone else for we are your special possession your own people called out of darkness we give you thanks, for this is special to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm also enjoying some water here. Glory be to God. Amen. Now, First Peter 2.9 talks about this chosen generation. It is chosen. It is special. It is a royal priesthood. <laughs> you know the priesthood. We are also called into priesthood. How are priests separated? How are they consecrated? You need to understand the old and then you see the new and apply. That's how we understand scriptures. Did you see how Moses was given instruction and Aaron to consecrate the priests? Mm -hmm. They are kind of washing. They are kind of dressings. They are diet. The areas which were to be sanctified by the blood. Their ears. Mm -hmm. Is it the right ear? The eye? The toe? Signifying a number of things. If you remember what Elder Christopher shared with us during Pentecost. Mm -hmm. The consecration of priests. Why were they being consecrated? So that they would serve in the tabernacle of God. So we cannot serve God until we are consecrated. I want that to get into our minds. And into our spirits. 
you must be consecrated. You must be wholly devoted to God. There's no two way about it. If you want to serve God, if you want to be part of God's, what God is doing in this generation, you must be consecrated. Priests who are never consecrated, they died in the tabernacle and they had to be pulled out. God says judgment is coming in the house. They are those who have played with the platform God has given them. You are going to see lots of things happening this year. And don't be surprised. Even big names. You'll see how God is going to expose sin and wickedness that have been happening in his body. Some will die, unfortunately. But God is telling us, warning us from last year, consecrate yourself, separate yourself. You know, I always tell you things in advance, but I don't tell you, oh, thus is the Lord. You watch the space. A lot is going to happen. God will choose his own means. <laughs> we cannot stand as a hindrance to block people from entering the kingdom of God. Through our ways, our lifestyle, and how we minister. We are royal priests. It's not a, according to the order of Aaron. This is another higher order. We are called by a higher calling in the order of Melchizedek priesthood. Kings and priests unto the holy God. How can we stand as priests when our hands are defiled all the time? Our beds are defiled. Our mouths are defiled. Our feet have run to places of evil. God is saying, no. There's going to be a separation in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank God you are hearing this. Can you just lift up your hands and say, Lord, have mercy on me. I surrender. I come before your throne. I stand and I wait on you. Like the goldsmith waits on like the fire, concrete fire, powerful, strong fire. To melt the dross. I pray as I submit myself to your fire. That you will purge my life. Purge my tongue. My soul. My spirit. My body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God. That I may stand as a royal priesthood. A holy nation. Separated from the rest and different. In every way that I may show forth the praises of God. Lord, I pray that you help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen. Let me tell you, you signed in for something serious. There is grace. Yes. But also you are required to walk according to a certain pattern. A pattern that your flesh does not want. But you must kill it. So that God is glorified. Can you say amen if you're in agreement? Hmm? Amen. This chosen generation is to be separate. So that it can show forth the praises of God. Who called us out of darkness. When someone sees how you handle your work. They will... They will praise the Lord. Say, eh, that is a true local. A true man or woman of God. Amen. A true man or woman of God. For sure, this one has been called out of darkness, out of corruption, out of immorality, out of filthiness, out of anger. Look. Still able to walk in love. Love is the test. <laughs> how you love God. And how you love one another. That is the law. The commandment. The instruction. The Torah. It does not change in the New Testament. It is even magnified. How can we show forth the praises of God? By our obedience. To his law. 
John 14, 15. First John 5, verse 3. Yeah. John 14, 15. What does it say? Let me look at it on my laptop. John 14. Amen. John 14, 15. Give me a second. John um, 14, 15. Said, you may ask me of anything in my name. I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. The spirit of truth. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, let me get it. Yeah. If you love me, keep my commandments. Keep it. That word keeping is a military term. The way you keep something precious is how God tells us to keep his commandment. It's a military term. It must be alert. First John 5, 3 says what? For this is the love of God. This is. Listen to what the next statement. This is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. <laughs> keep. Keep it. Ah, commandments, commandments, commandments. I'm showing you in the New Testament. We have been called, we have been chosen to be his special people. These people keep. It is what defines their relationship. It is what defines their love. Because the Ten Commandments are divided into two. How to love God and how to love one another. And it is you enter into it by covenant. It is what produces us as a special people. Because you can't take your neighbor's wife. You can't steal your neighbor's things. You, 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 you honor your neighbor. You don't claim their cars and their buildings. <laughs> you know, you walk in love. You take care of your neighbor's children. You love God. That's how you express love. Love is shown when you keep the commandments. That's all. Somebody cannot tell you that they love you, but they want to sleep with you. They don't want to honor your body. They don't want to honor covenant. That is not love. We have been called and chosen to be these special people. Hello. Let me read another scripture and then we pray. The book of Revelation 17, 14 says what? Let me read it in uh, which version, which version, which version? Let me read it in King James. Revelation 17, 14 says, this, this kind of people, no, this shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. Hallelujah. For he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and they that are with him, they are with the Lamb. Those who are with the Lamb are called, they are Chosen and we are faithful. So are you with the lamb? Even in this time we are waging war. Are you fighting with the lamb? Those who are fighting with the lamb are consecrated. They are called. They are chosen. They are faithful. The battle is on. <laughs> oh my God. Huh? That's why the... The, the wicked are fighting with the lamb. 
but we are the, we are the ones who are accompanying the lamp let me read in another version mm -hmm. where well, we yes let me read it in the Berean standard bible they will make war against the lamb that means those who are in the kingdom of darkness and satan and the lamb will triumph over them because he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and he will be accompanied by his called and chosen and faithful ones. So on whose side are you fighting? Lift up your hands and say, Lord, help me to be consecrated. Help me to follow your commandments. Help me to align with heaven. Help me to consecrate myself to you, O Lord our God. Help me to be faithful. Help me to be among the chosen one. I want to be on the side of the Lamb of God. In the name of Jesus, not arguing against the commandments, not walking in wickedness, not abusing the grace of God. Oh Lord my God, I pray that you help us. Help me Lord our God to walk in your ways in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Are we obedient? Hmm? Second Chronicles 34 and 35 we see about King Josiah how many of you remember how Josiah destroyed wicked altars, cleansed the land from sin? I want you to be ruthless against sin in this hour. Don't play with sin. Don't come near it. Judge it in the name of Jesus. He cleansed the land. He sanctified the land. We are given instruction to be sanctified in the word. What are we doing as we read the Bible every day? We are getting washed, sanctified in the word of God. It's a process. Don't think sanctification just comes by prayer only. But the main part of consecration, I mean sanctification, which is part of consecration, is the word of God, the truth cleansing you, removing all the lies and the dross. Don't think it's just, you'll just come one day. That's when we tell people, read the word. Be in the word. They think we're asking them too much. It's up to you. I have told you, your blood cannot be on my head, neither on my children and my family. Because I've told you the truth. Jesus prayed, sanctify them with your truth. Your word is truth. And for that sake, I sanctify myself, that you may sanctify them with your truth. Know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Part of your deliverance comes when you read the Bible and know the truth for yourself. Uh, uh, you see, uh, continue singing that. Many will fall away. I pray that you're not a part of that number. God has called me to equip overcomers. Those who are weak turned into strength. How many of you remember the men of David? They were discouraged. They were dissatisfied. They were uh, distressed. But God... When they handed themselves into the hands of the God of David, what happened? They became the great men of David. Great men of who? Of David. The great men of David. They, were, they took the city. God is not calling the qualified. Just come the way you are. Just come the way you are. He will make you into a strong man. There's no other way out. When you, are, when you come here, you'll be made into a strong man. You need to look at the meaning of Mishka. God will make you into a strong man and overcome. Even if you're weak. Even if you don't know, the Lord will help you to know. There's no other way out. You love to be strong. You love to overcome in this world. That's what we are called in this end time. Hallelujah. 
Will we submit ourselves to the word of God? We can read other things, but when it comes to the word of God, we complain. Ah! That's not found here. Hallelujah. We must hear the word of God. And Josiah dealt with that. He even read the word of God before making the covenant with God on behalf of all the people. Don't you see that even when they were brought before Sinai, God read the covenant, the commandments, the word, and then sprinkled blood on them. Josiah went to destroy all the abominations in the land. He knew that if Israel would not would live by the words of God's law, they could keep sin at bay and develop divine holiness. And so can we. Glory be to God. What are you seeing in your land? In your community? In your family? In your life? The abominable things that need to be dealt with ruthlessly. May the Lord ask God to give you the grace to expose sin in your life. In your life. You judge it in your life. You judge it in your house. We're in the season. Otherwise, if, you're not, if you don't judge it, you'll be judged. God tells us, examine yourself. Judge yourself so that you're not judged. The season for judgment in the house of God has begun. Oh, shakate riboriba. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you'll help us. Help us, Lord. Show us the areas we need to deal with. The areas of sin. The areas of darkness. Let there be light in those areas. Lies that we've covered. Things that we have hidden. Private Lord our God. That are consuming us. It is time to walk in the light. Help us to walk in the light. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 It's not a joking matter. The Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies, not by anything, but the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service or act of worship. How can you worship God and you don't present your body as a living sacrifice? <laughs> You don't send it, you don't present it as a living sacrifice, a holy sacrifice, an acceptable sacrifice. At the end of the day, it's not reasonable. Act of worship. God rejects. You may have sweet vocabularies in singing and in worship, but empty. The Bible says, and be not conformed to this world. In which areas are you conforming to this world? But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you do that? By the word of God. Transformation it does not come by prayer only. One day prayer that I'll, I'll repent, I'll do this. That's why we are working together as a community. We are reading the word of God. Same scripture, same word. And we come to discuss why we want to achieve transformation. Transformed Bible study. We are renewing our minds. We are taking up the mind of God. We are removing that which is wicked. That we may prove what is good, acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 1 to 2. Can you, can you prove what is good and what is accepted? And how come the world, the church is just picking up everything? Because their minds are not renewed. They eat everything, not knowing that they are priests. They dress anyhow, they touch anyhow, and clean things. And you think God will answer? We take action to prove that we are different, peculiar people and holy people. We have been set apart for God's use. Amen? God called his fast foods out of season to sow the seeds for the latter harvest. It is by our action that we show God that we are setting ourselves apart every day of our lives 
unto him. Will you be part of this move? It's not about entertainment. Those, those days are gone. Those days are gone. These are the days because you are either judged or you are lying. That's the season we've entered into. And God is serious with his work and his assignment on earth. Father, we surrender to you this morning. We ask that you be glorified. And that you be exalted in our ways and our walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And as we come to your word... Lord, may you speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we want to continue with looking at <clears throat> the community of Jesus and his disciples. We are going step by step. Next week we are going to look at the early church. And we are going to spend some more time there. So that you see from Genesis to Revelation. <clears throat> God's community. The language is community. The language is covenant. The language is oneness. The language is a shared life. Not individualism. You are saved as an individual. And then you are brought into a community. So you need to learn how to live. In the community of the saints. Say amen. Glory be to God. Now. The reality of following Jesus. Is communal. Communal. You are saved as an individual. And you are removed from where you are. As an individual. You are translated and brought pap into a body of community. In this community, we are led by through covenant, not contracts, not loose connections. We are we are joined with one another. Amen. To become a community. You are we are united in diversity. You don't lose who you are. Amen. You don't lose your giftings and ability. We are, only, we are brought to a common body, a common law, a common covenant, a common way of life. Which reflects the sign. Hallelujah. The first disciples of Jesus formed a community. Around Jesus. Just like in the wilderness. Even right now we are a community. Around Jesus. They were together. When he was arrested. They were together. When he was preaching. Healing the sick. You could see them together. 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 Eating together. Visiting together. <laughs> What was he modeling for them? Community. Amen. At resurrection, they were together. And that's why Mary had to run and call them, knock the door. Open, he's resurrected. When they came, they were running together. They went back and hid together. <laughs> Jesus entered into the house and found them together and preached to them. Thomas was so surprised. He said, Lord, show us if you are the one. Oh. When he was ascending to the heavens, he was with them together. Community. Community. 
community, they learned from him when they were together. That's why you see everyone writing their accounts and their accounts are, 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 are lining up. John is writing. Matthew is writing. Mark. Everyone giving accounts. And you can see how their stories are corroborated. Together. They, they wrote what they saw. They wrote what they witnessed. Because they were together. You know the conditions even of being chosen that they must have been with us from the beginning. Together. Together. The power of one. The power of community. Even in learning. They were together when the Holy Ghost fell at Pentecost. They were told to go and wait together. In Acts 2, 4. They stayed together as an intentional community from which they evangelized Jerusalem and they grew together. The Bible says the disciples grew in number together. They served together. They blessed one another. They studied the scriptures together. They prayed together. They ate together. <laughs> and you? You don't want to work with the people. Only time they were split was when they lost their courage in the face of corruption. I mean the the cross. They were also forced during persecution. They were scattered. Individualism places the rights of the individual over anything else. And this creates a society of self. Is the reason the gospel, the preaching of the gospel is struggling. Have you seen? And that's why there is economic inequality. I'm doing business in this, but you go and buy from someone else. We don't even know what each other does. So that I can support your business. And then we cry that there's no money. How do other people do business? Look at the community of the Indians. The Chinese. And the Muslims. Their money is circulating among them. They are growing. They understood community and they picked it. It is us who have accepted the Western mindset and culture. Through the gospel. Which has been brought with the gospel. We are not looking at the, the Bible. It's about my thing. It manifests in consumerism. Violence. <laughs> and we think we can go ahead? No. We must recover authentic Christian community. Kingdom community. Look at what is happening in the testimony of churches. What's happening? Unhealthy competitions. People are dying. Look at how things are happening everywhere. Some people believe that they're only Christians. Eh? <laughs> we cannot do what other churches are doing. All they are called to do. We are not called to do that. May the Lord help us. Individualism is the reason why demons are active in churches and fellowships and prayer meetings. They are not going. When we are one, the enemy cannot prevail. Let me declare to you that the church is a community of disciples on a mission. If we lose focus on our mission, 
But people, some people don't want to be part of this mission. They want their comfort lives. They want success. They are pursuing their own success, not the purposes of God in their success. Jesus made community an inherent part of discipleship. He could have chosen a single disciple to mentor one on one. Or he could have only talked to crowds. But instead he created a community of 12 men to closely follow and learn from him. Even out of the tell of tell of he made three very close to him. Peter, James, and John. Close companions rather than just one. Mm. <laughs> How are you walking? With your wife only? And not with the other family? Hmm? Jesus knew that one disciple could not fully begin to practice his teaching without being joined by others. You cannot learn to love, my brother, my sister. You cannot learn to love, forgive, and sacrifice without other people to love, other people to forgive, other people to sacrifice for. And it is the reason we have brought into the community so that you can learn how to forgive others. I can hear someone laughing in the heart. Mm. <laughs> yes, that's the truth. Whew. Yes, that's it. If he had chosen only one disciple, Jesus could only have taught theoretical knowledge. <laughs> but by forming a group, his lessons often arose naturally out of the disciples' conversations and even quarrels with each other. Remember in Luke 9, 46 to 48, the disciples are arguing over which one of them is the greatest. And he took opportunity to teach them that being great in the kingdom means being the least. Serve. Just want to come, fellowship, worship God and go back home. Yeah. <laughs> I remember a lot. He kept his righteousness to himself in the gate. When the city was being destroyed, he wasn't even spared also. Let me build my own wall and gate. Those children are bad. Be part of the community. <clears throat> Let God give you strategies to heal the community, even your, 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 your village. For how long are you going to separate yourself? We are not brought into an isolation. From the world. We are salt of the world. We even fear to talk to our neighbors. They will kill us. Kill you how? Greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. You need to be taught how to be sent among wolves as sheep. And still come back as sheep. Without the wolves eating you up. That's, how we are going. Well, that's what we are going to teach you in the discipleship. How to be humble as a dove. He <laughs> said, I'm sending you as sheep. So you need to understand what that means. Among wolves. Wolves eat fish, I mean eat sheep. But you need to come back and go meet other wolves also. And turn them and convert them into sheep and train them to become sheep and then send them as sheep among other wolves. You need to understand what it means to be wise as serpent when you're dealing with a community in your workplace, community in the village. All these are to be employed together in how we live on earth. 
That's why don't miss this discipleship. You may think, ah, me, I've gone through discipleship class. It's okay. If you have gone through, it's okay. I want those who are hungry to learn. Those who want to know what God is doing in this hour. I'm not just devaluing other discipleship classes. <laughs> this is what God has given us. If you want to be part of what God is doing here, this is it. This is what God wants to do with us. We are being trained for certain things. Not to conform, but to be different in this world. Amen. By choosing the twelve, Jesus also acknowledged our need for community. We need each other. Mm, we need each other. I need you. I'm not all that strong to stand alone. I need your prayers. Ah, pastor, for you, you think, hey, my friend, I may need more prayers than you. You don't know what I'm dealing with. As a leader, you know, there are level of attacks I'm facing every hour, every second. Without your prayers, I'm not, I'm as strong as your prayer. I pray, yes. But when, when you can pray, that's why Paul was begging for prayer. Pray for me also. Say, but you, Paul, how can I pray with you? Uh -uh. Pray. He acknowledged our need for community. We grow and receive strength from mutual encouragement. Sometimes people just come to the office and I encourage them. Some also look for me and encourage me. They support. They sharpen me. Iron sharpen iron. Hmm? How are you going to grow? Ah, for me, I don't need those people. It's okay. Let's see how far you go. <laughs> when Jesus stated that he was going to Judea, Thomas told the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. John eleven sixteen. His courage to follow Jesus, even though he fully expected to be killed, inspired the rest to do likewise. See, you coming for prayer, retreat, encourage somebody else who is weak. Say, hey, you are going for prayer. Please don't leave me behind. You can pray the whole night alone. And that is good. But when you pray the whole community together, power is released like never before. Hmm? Community. I hope by now you've been convinced. Finally, That disciples formed the earliest example of a church or an ecclesia. Learning to follow Jesus as a church body. They learned how to follow Jesus together. And so they were able to build the church after his ascension. Before going to create more disciples and start the church, they had to learn to be the church themselves, the community of God. Because what, what were they going to teach them? Community. Together they endured crisis like the storm on the Sea of Galilee. Together they saw miracles. Jesus feeding 5,000. 5,000. Together they failed as when they could not cast out an evil spirit. And together they ran to the master 
help us. And together they learn that this one cannot go away except by prayer and fasting. They ate together. They remained together after their master was crucified and their hopes destroyed. When the leader retires, do you scatter? You remain together the more. Can you imagine if there was he was just training one disciple and the one this one disciple experiencing all these things alone? That disciple could not endure it all. There is strength in number. There is power in oneness. Bear with one another. Pray for one another. Walk with one another. Encourage one another. Do not forsake the meeting together. Discipleship is a communal journey. And I like the African setting, it's community, but we are destroying it now. And we think it is the it is it is <laughs> it is a cake. That's why we no longer even know our homes, the direction to our homes. We don't know our language, we don't know our people. Have you seen when somebody dies in town, the villagers are standing far off and they are looking at who is that? <laughs> because they don't know you, you are not part of them. And you may not think that, you may think that uh, those funerals are, at least go in one. I'm not saying you, can't, you can attend all the funerals, no. Even when you go to the village, take time to greet people. Find out how they are doing. There are things God will open your eyes. You'll see even some altars of darkness around you. It's the neighborhood, yet you did not know. Community. 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 Why do you think in the village those days, Discipline was not for one parent. It was community. You could not just behave anyhow. <laughs> now there's you can one of the children. Eh, fire. Let's leave my child alone. Mm, those days we were kind, my friend. You were walking in the light in the community. <laughs> you were discipled in the community in your village. You couldn't steal anything. Anyone finding you with theft, you will be judged and dealt with. Discipline was communal. You could slaughter a cow. Every people will be called. Go take to this. People will be called. It was shared among the community. No one was stealing their things. But when the Western culture invaded even the Christianity, Individualism, me, myself, and I, we forgot about our oneness in God. And so, we have to recover what we lost. And I wonder nowadays, even to do God's work is becoming a... Ministers are manipulating people. Because people don't want to be part of what God is doing. They don't want to participate. They don't want to give... They think it is a tall order, yet they want to be ministered to by the man of God. How do we build without you coming together? How do we raise resources to help a number of things if you don't come together? We are coming together for our father's business to ensure that the work of God is going on. Other people wanted to be blessed, but they don't want to participate in it. Let others give. For me, I'll just be there to receive blessings. Let me tell you the truth. You cannot be blessed. God already knows your heart. Let me tell you, giving is for your own good. <laughs> it's two way. Oh, me, I'll just be praying with them and... Uh, <laughs> 
and you don't want to participate, you don't want to give, how? In fact, before God, you are not even guilty. Can you imagine? Let's do this together. Mm -hmm. yeah, I just want the prayer time. And learn, then I go my way. God has already seen your heart. That's why some people are not blessed. They are not blessed. Some people come from somewhere and they begin to participate and they see them getting blessed and they wonder, God, why am I not getting blessed? It's like you've, 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 you've devalued what God is doing in that place. Yet you know it is blessing you. You are either in or not. When we are praying for, be, pray, be part of that. If not, look for a place where you can be part of fully. You know? The body of Christ is, we are part of the body of Christ. Participate in the body. Let's not cheat ourselves. Participate actively. Because you're also drawing. You are eating. You are feeding. How does that come? Mm -hmm. Individualism. May the Lord deliver us. So that we walk in the oneness he has called us for. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your loving kindness, your grace, your power, your anointing, your teachings, your rebuke, what you are doing in us no one else can do, and we want to bless you. As we take on this journey, may we participate. However little it is, may we participate. However much it is, may we participate. Each joint supplying. Each joint contributing something to the other. The eye is contributing by helping the body to see. The legs is helping the body for movement. The, yes, the air, the nose, the tongue, everything is working together. The hair is done well to bring glory. Oh Lord our God. Every part contributing. May we not be the toothers. In the community of God. But be able to be contributors. Because you've called us to participation in the body. To the glory of your name. I bless your people. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine on you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord give you peace. In Jesus name we have prayed. And everybody said. Amen. And amen. God Bless you and shalom. See you next week. And all the facilitators, we are meeting on Sunday evening from 6 to 7. We just want to catch up as we prepare for what is ahead of us in February. God bless you.